my husband died, so this is another part of it, in 86, 87. I was by his side, and when he died, his spirit went into my energetic field. Now, I didn't know that at the time. I couldn't really put words to that, but I knew that he was with me, and I knew I couldn't shake him, and I was like, I've lived with you for 12 years, and I have to live with you. So I went to this psychic, and she said, so who's the dead guy? And I go, oh, that would be my dead husband. Welcome, Shaman Isabella, to the studio. Thank you. Um, I'm very grateful to have you join us today. Um, what you do is um, unknown to a lot of people of how it works and what, if, what it actually is. And um, I would love to share that with everybody today. Great. Um, so I'll, I'll start with what is a shaman? I love that question. So I teach in story. So we'll have a lot of stories today because you keep, ever since I walked in the door, you're, you're encouraging me to tell more stories. And the very first time I was interviewed, it was probably 2009. The minute I decided to turn my home into the Orange County Healing Center dot com, you know, <laughs> which is a big name for a little house of a tiny little house in Fullerton. And the minute I decided to, to do this work, Spirit started showing up with podcasts and radio shows and interviews and and so my first one was what is a shaman yeah. and I thought I don't even know I don't even really know what a shaman is yeah. I need to look it up in the dictionary <laughs> what is a shaman yeah. and oh. it is a conduit between the physical world and spiritual world and I thought to myself yeah uh, I yeah that's what I do I'm a conduit between the physical world and spiritual world and I can say that and I was so nervous and so, you know, it was just bigger than me. The yeah. whole experience has been bigger than me. So, where were you born? Hollywood. In Hollywood? <laughs> so, you, so, you were actually born in Hollywood? I was actually born in Hollywood wow. <laughs> in so 1960 uh, to Victor Stoloff and Jacqueline Craven. And uh, he was a semi-famous director, writer, producer. Uh, was nominated Best Documentary Feature Film 1943 for a film that he made in Egypt where he was raised. He was Russian, and they migrated uh, during the 1913 takeover. And my mother was on the sides of buses and a very famous English Actress. model. Yeah. And so my father saw her on a plane and said, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, and whisked her off, and the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. So... So you're in Hollywood. How was your life? How was normal life before? Crazy. Crazy. I lived a crazy, crazy life, as most shamans do, right? Shamans are raised in the jungle and having to learn the plants and, you know, learn how to live. And uh, I say, well, I guess I was in shaman training. You know, it was the 60s and drugs were very prevalent. And I lived in the Hollywood Hills from Mackenzie Phillips and Jodie Foster and, you know, all these soon-to-be movie stars were kids. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a very tumultuous childhood. My father was gone all the time. He had a whole other family in France. My mother was older when she had me and starting to do matron modeling and hard on her ego. And, and I was just sort of, you know, on my own to run the streets and, and do what I will. So, so did you feel like you were going to go into that industry? Is that really being in Hollywood and seeing how the culture was there? Did you feel like that was? Uh, yeah, you in yeah. That I, w I went to the American National Academy of Performing Arts. <laughs> <laughs> in <laughs> anticipation, right? Inventor <laughs> Boulevard. It's still there, and uh, but I was a rebel, and my mother was very strict and from England and very, you know, and my sisters had moved away; they were much older. And what part of England was she from? Manchester so originally, and my uh, grandfather was a hat maker, a milliner. Okay. And so they went to London and then ended up in Pinnerwood. Do you know Pinner? I'm not familiar with Pinner. Nobody is. <laughs> it's <laughs> in the Actually middle of nowhere. But then the war broke out, and, you know, and she waited for the American army to come to France and then went to France mm -hmm. and worked for the American army, typing checks and doing her modeling and... Yeah, it's a story. I told you when we get started, <laughs> it's one story after the other. 
So, so this is the, the, the creation of you, right? So you're picking up on all this stuff as you're going. You're adding this into your book of who you're going to be and what's going to transform you. Who, right, who I thought I'd be. Who you thought, yeah. I, I remember, it's, it's interesting, I remember at 10 years old in all the crazy of, you know, I'm writing Andy Griffith stories on the, uh, you know, the Andy Griffith show on the kitchen table and, and uh, me just feeling very lost in this adult world and wanting to be grown up. Yeah. But I remember at 10 years old saying, one day I will change the world. I'll be a teacher, I'll, I'll do something fantastic, you know? Yeah. But I had no idea what that was and I had a long way to go before that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 do you, so you go into the workforce, like where did you end up going? So you I, I, honestly, yeah. you wanna know? Yeah. I ended up uh, running away from home I'd gone through a couple of uh, bad instance instances, and I ran away from home, met and married my husband, who was 20 years older than me, and the heroin dealer. I was 14, and I lived this crazy life with him. Sure. Uh, I had my child when I, first child when I was 15, second child when I was 19, or 16, 16 when I had my son, 19 when I had my daughter Amber. And at 26, he contracted cancer and died. And so I lost custody of my kids. And I, was, I mean, I was very caught up in the drug scene and the drug world. And I started going to jail and eventually ended up in prison and did a year in prison and then just lived this <laughs> kind of life. So this is toughening you. Like as you're going through yeah. this, like you are becoming <laughs> tough. Like well, I know the darkness, <laughs> let me yes. tell you. I've seen the darkness. And I always knew I was the light. There were th things that he would say to me. Um, I was abused, so a battered wife and there were things that he would say to me like you know don't think you know just don't think you know I was like what I thought you know I'm a kid yeah. you know but I thought yeah. and he'd say don't think and I think to myself you know that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because I was raised by these creative people who inspired me to think and read and and be creative so I I just, uh, it, there was something inside of me that was stronger than when he hit me. There was something inside of me that thought, you know, you're the one who's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not me. Yeah. But I couldn't leave, and I, uh, you know, I love my kids, and I stayed. I'm going to divulge a secret yeah. today. I stayed for the children who I recently found out he's not their father. He's neither of their fathers. My son just reconnected with his father, which was a childhood love, and you know, happened one time, but that's all it takes. And so here we are 44 years later, I just saw him again, and my son is reunited with his father. And my daughter's father we're going to look for and try to find, so the story just keeps evolving. Evolving, evolving. There's so much going into it, and it's, you know, I see that when all these things happen to us, it makes us stronger for what we take on later. Yeah. So it's it's like the battle. If you don't let it break you. Yes, because you're really the the world on materialism is hammering you and trying to suppress you and trying to say this is the way. Stand straight, wear your tie, give a salute. Yeah. And and you're trying to say, well, I'm a creative being, <laughs> but I'm following what the masses are trying to show. Yeah, or, you know, not, because I definitely wasn't. Yeah. yeah where, you know, I was going to the beat of my own drug, drug, <laughs> going and to the beat of my drum. own <laughs> drum, is what I was going to say, came on drugs. Um, but I really wanted to escape. I wanted to feel nothing. I wanted to be out of this body. I was pushing um, it. And in 1991, I got pregnant again. Um, had lost custody, like I say, of the other two children, and had gone back to prison for, uh, you know, a violation of parole, and found out I was pregnant in jail, <laughs> and I thought I'm 30. You, you remember this say, saying, "I'm 31 and the rabbit done died." That used to be what we said, right, when, when you found out you were pregnant, and I thought, you know, what if this baby could change my life? And she did, yeah. and her name is Victoria. Yeah. And uh, she is brilliant. I got custody of the other two children back. They've gifted me with three grandchildren. I have my grandson. I wanted to bring him today, so <laughs> he's sleeping. He's 15. But it's an interesting journey yeah. that for the past 30 years, I've been working at the level of the mind yeah. to teach people how to 
come out of their mind through theater. So I have a master's degree in theater. I taught acting for years. Had my own program called For the Love of Acting. And uh, and shamanism came <laughs> in and <laughs> it so, so swept me away. When did it turn <clears throat> now? When did you say I want to be a shaman? Like when does that the lead up? Never. Happen? never. I never said I wanted to be a yeah. shaman. <laughs> but at some point you you, you I, get pulled into it or it, it turns into you. Well, so my mother had dementia and was in a home for a year and a half. And she wanted to die at home and be planted in a rose garden, you know, and that never happened. Yeah. 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 So um, I was in Idaho, just graduated with my master's degree and was feeling very lost. Um, I was with a man that was beautiful, but it just wasn't working out. We're back together now yeah. after 23 years. Funny how the story goes, right? You never know. Very exciting life. It's very <laughs> exciting life. I can't believe I'm still here living it. I thought I would die at 30. In the 60s, we always said, you know, at 30 years old, that's it. You yeah. Down with the establishment. I'm not going to live past 30. That they're, they're the man, you know, that whole scene that I lived through. And... Um, so, yeah, I was very stuck in my life in Idaho. I graduated and wasn't, you know, I was working as a fundraiser for the Leita Trail and doing, you know, theater there. It was like a big fish in a little pond. But he and I, it wasn't working out. And my mother started coming to me etherically. You know, if you've ever been visited by a spirit, you know, she was out of her body. And she would come to me in my dreams and she would come to me and tell me, get me out of here. Get me out of here. And I thought, how am I going to get you out of yeah. there? And I can't get myself out of here. Yeah. And this is while she was alive yeah. and she had dementia, right? Yeah, yeah. So even though the body might still be alive, the spirit it's, it's is most of the time not there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're flying around trying to figure out how to get out. And so I found a shaman in Chile. Had so my so wh 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 what makes you go to Chile in the first place? But I didn't go anywhere. I, I, I was in Idaho. So I talked to an old friend, and I told her my story, and she said, I have been working with Alberto Violdo in the Four Winds Society. You have to start watching his stuff. It's amazing. It's changed my life. And there's a woman named Marcella Lobos, who's now Alberto's wife. Uh, this is 2006. And get a healing over the phone. What's your perception of this? Just hearing this, like, the guy's going to email? I, I was like, what? Yeah. Over the phone? Yeah, yeah that's not possible. <laughs> that's not going to work. I'm not even going to try that. Yeah. That's, you know. And she said, Isabella, you've always believed in energy. You've always believed in spirit. So trust that energy transfers yeah. energy. Yeah. You, you already know. My mother raised me very, um, very uh, eclectic. Like she, we, she believed in past lives. She believed in astrology. She was psychic. But she had nobody she could talk to about it. Because, you know, in the modeling world or in, in those days, yeah. it's unheard of to talk about spirituality. So she fed me all of it and my sisters as well. And uh, so I didn't have a hard time believing it. It was just like really over the phone. Yeah. And now, of course, I've been doing them over the phone for over 10 years. But in those days, I didn't believe it. But I was in so much pain. I was willing to try anything. I was so stuck. So you're in a rut in your life, and you're trapped, and you're saying, I just need something anything. to show me the light. Get me out of here. Yes. yes. Get me out of here. And uh, I had that over the phone healing. Within a month, my mom transitioned. Within six months, I had the liver biopsy, the knee surgery, broke up with the boyfriend, got my daughter, came back to California. It happened so, the transformation well, and also, uh, when my husband died, so this is another part of it, in 86, 87, I was by his side, and when he died, his spirit went into my energetic field. Now, I didn't know that at the time. I couldn't really put words to that, but I knew that he was with me, and I knew I couldn't shake him, and I was like, I've lived with you for 12 years, and I have to live with you. So I went to this psychic, and she said, so who's the dead guy? And I go, oh, that would be my dead husband. And she said, well, I can put him in a room for six months, but he's too strong. I can't get rid of him. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to live with him forever. And I'd have dreams about him and whatnot. And after that healing with my mom, I had a liver biopsy that almost killed me. 
I bled four units of blood into my belly. I had, I cured hepatitis C, but in those days I had hep C. And I'm like dying. And I go into ICU, they get me back home. I'm not really recuperating. And I watch one of Alberto's videos about reoccurring traumas, how they can come back to you over and over until you heal them. And so I called Marcella back. I said, oh, Marcella, I got another one. I got a dead husband that you got to get rid of. And she said, oh, no, no, Miss Isabella, no, no, no. We respect the dead. We honor the dead. Get a picture of him, make an altar. I said, are you kidding me? I'm not making an altar of that. No, you know. But I did. I did what she told me. And she did something called an extraction. And because she started tracking, you know, she's shaking the rat, oh, looking, looking. She says, oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes, I see him. Oh, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I have to call in the ancestor. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, what ancestors? What are you calling so in? So there's a full army coming to like, get rid of him. Like, there's a whole <laughs> army to get rid of this guy. <laughs> Bless his heart now. And uh, she extracts him. I throw up. It's a it, over the phone. Wow. It's a very dramatic scene. And I um, mo moved back to California free for the first time. So, you, so now you're coming back. You feel revived? Are you feeling? I feel energetically clear. Okay. I feel like I understand energy than I better than e ever before. Like I knew energy. I know we're made up of energy. If you put your hands together, yes. you can feel it. You have right, this right, aura yeah. around you. Yes. You know, whether or not you believe in this stuff, just that yeah. alone, just feel yourself. Yes. <laughs> you just yes. feel your heart. And everything that ever happens to you creates a memory imprint on your light body. Now, I didn't know that at the time, but you know, I slowly came to this knowledge because when I came back, I thought, what is that shaman stuff? I think I'm gonna take these classes. So I start, t you know, in Joshua Tree, because Alberto teaches all over the world. Mm -hmm. I start taking these shaman classes. I start, I'm really into it, but I'm not going to be one. Yeah, but are you working at this like, time? You're not working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm back here. I'm, I'm teaching at Fullerton College. Okay, so. Okay. Working with Alzheimer's patients. Got it. Like, total 3D. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's what it is. Because you're like, well, how do I go and do that when I'm so busy in my day-to-day -day life, which doesn't allow you to go and explore? Because now you got to pay the bills and stuff, right? Right. So, okay, so right. Go, go ahead. So um, Joshua, I, was, I was blessed with a, a little bit of an inheritance. And that inheritance, when my mom passed, allowed me to take these classes, which were very expensive. And, but I tell people, you know what? If you want to do it, the money will show up. Yeah. So even though I had that, I was still single mom, still taking care of my daughter, still working. And when I wanted to do something and thought, I didn't have the money for it. I learned about money. So money's just energy. And we're taught that it's the root of all evil when it's not. Money is beautiful. It, it pays for things. It allows you to live. And I always say the man with the most land wins. So if you have money, buy land and plant food because that's what you're going to need to live. And so I started realizing that if I just put down a deposit for that class, the money would show up. If I And then I started blowing on money because everything is breath and intention, right? So when you're... And it's interesting that you're saying about the breath because when you see when shamans are blowing into the stone, right? Yeah. Is, is the blowing. And I've never understood that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're doing a session with me, I'll hand you a stone okay. or you'll pick it, actually. You'd pick okay. your own stone out, but you're a little far away. Okay. And, I, and you talk about what's troubling you. And as you're talking about what's troubling you, I'll say, blow that in the stone. And so you just <sighs> blow that in the stone. Now, if I'm doing it over the phone, I blow for you, yeah. and then you have a, a stone or nothing. So I teach people now, if you're feeling heavy, if you're feeling like all your chakras are blocked, or if you don't know what chakras are and you think you're blocked, you just take a deep breath, and you... <sighs> Blow it out. You don't even have to be a stone. You just be blow it out and trust that the angels and guides and ancestors or whatever the benevolent being that you believe in, Jesus, whatever it is you believe in, is wiping that away. Yeah. And through the breath, you'll notice. So take a breath right now and blow. Like a little quick shift. You're shifting out of the negative consciousness, shifting your energy body. 
And so I started taking these classes. And for three years, I took these classes with no intention of teaching or being a shaman or doing healings. Actually, I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. So why, why, why didn't you want to? I didn't to? want to. I, 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 I was such a big giver and such a victim in those days. I could, I, I somehow knew I, I would, it wouldn't be for me. Like it just didn't seem like it would be for me. And then I noticed with all the people coming to me that it was really a past life of being responsible for the tribe and them all dying or leading everyone into battle yeah. on the horses and then dead bodies everywhere. And so there was a sense of responsibility that I hadn't learned yet how to give up. Mm. And now I teach it to moms who are codependent with their kids yeah. <laughs> and taking their power by th helping them. But I'm, but I'm helping them, but mm. I'm, I'm trying to help. No, you're not. <laughs> Let them be responsible for themselves. Sure, you gotta clothe and feed and you know nurture your child. But at a certain age, you have to let go. And yes. I learned that with my son. Which is hard for any parent. Hard at hard, any hard, age. Hard. So hard that I noticed that when I worried about him, or I was sending out worry cords, because now, of course, the more I'm a feeler healer, yes. but the more I do, the more I see, the more I hear, the more you explore your gifts, the more they come out. Yes. And I realized that sending that worry cord out was actually affecting him. And so I started doing cancel, cancel. You got this. Yes. You got this. You got this. It's Tr like trusting in him. Yeah. Like you trust Sending him. out yes. a trust yes. energy, right? Yes. You got yeah. this is, so I teach a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be blowing in stones and putting them in people's pockets then, right? <laughs> no, don't put it in anyone's pocket. And also <laughs> realize that, I'm glad you said that, because also realize that whatever you put out, you get right back. Yes. And we're in a time of instant karma. We've been breaking karmic loops. We've been these karmic loops of, oh, you did that to me. I'm going to come back in the next lifetime and do it to you. And, and that's what I saw from my past of being raped and being abused and all that was I chose that yes. to have this experience, to know love more, and to realize that I'm breaking these old karmic patterns yes. and that I don't have to come back and do it again. <laughs> I can come back and be in a time of instant karma, mental telepathy, all the stuff that we first had when we found this planet. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay, so. Your turn. <laughs> 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 so okay, so you okay, so you're so you're now starting to do the healing with people. You're you're learning this. You're getting into this, and you're practicing more. When do you start finding that people are starting to be receptive to this? Because now you're going out there and you're trying to do this now. So when is oh, that? Oh, no, 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 no. That's so glad you brought that up. I teach my students, there's a fine line between sorcery and shamanism. There's a fine line between sorcery and healing. You never ask someone if they want a healing, even if you see they need it. They have to come to you. Interesting. It's like, you know, they have to give permission. You, you, you have to want it. Yes. They have to see that they need it. They have to contact you. Now, yes, I was, you know, I put myself out there as far as ads go. I was crazy. I was on the cover of magazines. I did all these interviews. I started a YouTube channel before YouTube was really that popular, you yeah. know? I have that eight shocker wisdom. Have you seen that one? Mm -hmm. It's my very first one in the backyard, and I'm teaching people about the eighth chakra above their head and how to open it up and clear it and mm -hmm. close it. And I did not really, here's the thing about me, I follow energy. Yes. I just follow energy. So you were asking me about the tours and the seven chakras yeah. of the planet and all, and I'm like, but I, it's not like I consciously said, I'm gonna go to Peru, it's the second chakra of the planet, I'm gonna and go and to Lake Titicaca. A, a lot of people don't even know that the planet has chakras. So uh, so that actually that was going to go into that topic, but, but a lot of people don't realize that, and they think, okay, well, the planet has chakras. We're just realizing the body has it, and the planet has it. Yeah. So obviously you have Peru, and you have England, and Glastonbury, right, well, and we, Egypt. We, but we can right, oh. right. So, so people don't know that they have these chakras, right? People also don't know that they're made up of the same ingredients as the earth. 
Think about what's in your body. What's your blood made of? What do you have in your blood? The food I eat. So what I would. What What are the minerals? What are the things? That iron. You have iron in your blood. Yeah. There's iron in the earth. You have magnesium. There's magnesium. You have sulfur. You have selenite. You have all. If you look at the components of how the blood is formed, and you look at the component list of the earth, you are of the earth. You're made up of the earth. That's how come when you eat the plants from the earth, yes. you live. And then processed food started coming in, and all this fake food, fast food stuff started coming in, and we started blowing up because our bodies can't digest it. They can't handle, not that I don't eat, Poorly sometimes, I do, but I really work hard at getting my green juices and beet juices and smoothies and stuff in because we need the minerals that are in the earth. So, so you, you said about following the energy. Yeah. So with the, the chakras on the planet, so if you can explain about Right, the so that's why I was, okay. I was going from, because the, the, that's the same thing. So you're made up of the same thing in the earth. So of course, if you have chakras, the earth has chakras. Right. Thank you for helping me circle <laughs> back because I get very passionate about food. <laughs> And GMO and all that stuff, which is a whole other topic. So, so, so the planet has these chakras. Mount Shasta is the first chakra, the root. Mm -hmm. I've taken people to sit on that mountain and, and meditate and be with one with the, the nature there. And Peru and Lake Titicaca, 2011 I took, uh, was it 2011, 2009, I took my very first group. So I went in 2006 and started going back a lot, and then I took my first group in 2009 and went to Lake Titicaca, which they say that is the second chakra. Yeah. But I look at Peru as the belly of the mother. She is Pachimama, she is, I've been a million times. I take people as often as I can. I was just there before COVID hit, so um, 2019 um, with my shaman who passed from that um, crazy disease. And so, um, let's see, then the third chakra is Australia, so I still have to take a group there. Um, Glastonbury is the fourth. Egypt is actually the fifth, although I feel Egypt aligns them all, because okay. um, Egypt is such a high vibration. The sixth moves a bit, but it's in Stonehenge, which I've also um, done. So we did the heart and the third eye uh, when we went to, uh, Avebury, Stonehenge, Glastonbury. We stayed in Glastonbury and Cornwall. And the energy that comes out. When and then the seventh is uh, the, Himalayas. the Himalayas. So, so, so the energy that comes out when you go to these locations, uh, is it the cleansing of the chakra on the body that's pulling and helping absorb into the body? Is that what you get by going there? I I, I think so. I um, it's different for everyone. What what people feel is their own uh, journey, their own experience. Uh, I know that in India, they believe that your lifetimes live inside the chakra, yeah. right? So when I'm doing a healing inside the chakra, and I use this crystal for extractions, but also Beautiful going story. inside, isn't she lovely? She wanted to come out and say <laughs> hi. I go inside the chakra, and I feel like it's a vacuum clearing that lifetime, clearing it out. And so, um, excuse me, uh, I believe that when people go and they connect with the land and they connect with their past life there on the land, if they've had one, most people have had <laughs> <laughs> past lives all over this world, and they uh, then also get knowledge. So not just that they clear and clean and expand that chakra, and let go of lifetimes, but that they also incorporate whatever it was they learned in that space and time in that past life. So, you know, I sometimes do healings along the way for people and privately and uh, let them explore that. But I don't like to say, I usually say it's a journey to your soul, yeah. you know. I don't like to say, we're going on this trip and you're going to feel this and I'm going to activate that. And it's just not my thing. My thing, I know a lot of people love to do that. A lot of people want to go on trips yeah. like that. But my thing is more, what is your, what did you get during yes. the day? And let's explore it at the, in the evening and talk about 
your experiences. I, I think this is the human beings trying to be very linear, where they need everything. So I must feel like this, and I must be lifted up and thrown around the room, and uh, expect yeah. a, But it's not. Yeah. It's very subtle things that happen. It's uh, very subtle, and, and it's and you. It's, it's an inner thing. So it's. Uh, that's kind of what I see is like people have an expectation that when we do healings or a healing is being done that magically I click my fingers and I'm flying but it's not it's it's a it's transitioning right yeah totally and you asked me earlier on you know when I how did I get the people and where yeah. you know what did I start doing and it was really friends you know it was in the beginning it was uh, friends would come and I do it for donations you know, and I'd lay them on the floor because my daughter was still in high school in the in the bedroom. I have a little tiny, like I said, Orange County Healing Center is a <laughs> tiny house. And I had ha didn't even have a massage table to put people on. They'd be on the floor and do my thing that I know to do. And I did not believe it myself. They felt better. They would get up and say, did you know, I had one that was, she's my favorite story. She, one of my favorite stories. And she's like, I was like, I see you, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. She's, I don't know, you're lying in this poppy field of sleep. Let's wake you up and get you moving. And I did all this stuff. And she sits up and she goes, you do know I'm from Kansas, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I had no idea. And she got up and she moved to New York and she's been there ever since. And that's wow. what she wanted. She wanted to move to New York. And, have been trying for five years and and this just allowed and it her just to allowed her to be free so yeah. i needed my own healing i still do i i have one coming up i mean i love them so much why wouldn't i keep uncovering myself um and you know it's like this time in my life i was so insecure and even though they got up and felt better i was like did that really happen like what just happened I was kind of in a trance or I was shaking my rat. I was just being guided by spirit. It's not me. I'm just the conduit, yes. right? And uh, I had this one healing for myself and she said, you died young. Uh, you were a young boy and you were a healer and you have a staff in your hand and you're sitting cross-legged and you, you know, died young and so you never got to fully express your power and and grow and so we're going to bring that part of you back and every time somebody says you did a good job you just say thank you yes and let him grow up and i said oh, okay i'll try that and it worked and slowly i became more confident more co and then you know yes. now so it's I, like second nature <laughs> <laughs> so is this happening in the u.s or this is actually you traveling to do the, your healings no all, all over the phone okay so okay fine yeah so uh, for me personally I don't do any healings in person, okay. for me personally, because my people are everywhere, yeah. and I actually only have, let's see, one, two, three, you know, that I that I that you trust yeah, yeah yeah be very careful yes. who you let in your energy yeah. energy field like really feel it. I've told people if you get on the table and you don't like how you feel, or you walk in and you don't like how you feel, walk, walk out. out. Tell them you can keep my money. Thank you. I'm just not feeling it. You don't yeah. have to be disrespectful and say. Ah, you know, just say, you know, I'm just not feeling it right now. Do not get on the table if you don't feel good. Trust your gut yes. because that spirit teaching you, that person's not for you. Yes. And I always say not everyone finds me. It's a very select type person. And I've actually taken to turning people down, which I never did before because I wanted to heal the world and I thought I could help everyone, but you can't. You can't. Do, You're do, not for everybody. Don't you feel like it gets harder for people to trust their own gut now because of all the noise that's coming from oh, the world? Oh, yeah, and the phone. So, so you don't hear yourself. You're, you're literally just following what you think is right because I'm supposed to do this versus yeah. being free and trusting. What you said, trusting, is something I, I strongly believe on. Yeah, but it's also clearing the mind because you can't listen to your gut if your mind is filled with nonsense, and most of it's nonsense. So when my mind because I'm, I'm a Gemini, I have a very active mind, a very creative mind, I want to do a million different things, and I can be very negative and hard on myself, and in the past, touch wood, not anymore. You see, I catch myself even, because your words are spells, your thoughts are things. Yes. That's one of the cards in my Good Vibes yes. deck. And, and you bought me this, and, and we'll do this in a second. I did, I did. And, and your words are spells, your thoughts are things. So hear what you're saying about yourself. If you don't like it, take it back yes. and change it. If you listen to your mind you think how is this thought serving me 
it's really not serving me, I'm gonna change it because that's the only thing you have power over. You do not have power over anything else in your life except for your mind. Mm -hmm. And if your mind is creating and your mind's create all the money that you want, all the abundance that you want, all the whatever you want, then you cannot afford a second of self-doubt, a second of beating yourself up, or I can't do that, or I'm not good enough, or I've lived this horrible life, and, and I was a drug addict, and I was a battered wife, and I'm gonna stay in that energy, and I'm gonna keep beating myself up, and he was right, no, 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 cancel, 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 blow. Go out. And now what? Yeah. And now what do I want instead? Yeah. What do I want instead? Yeah. And that's how I started traveling. So, so the good vibes, Good what, vibes. what do these cards do? <laughs> Good vibes. They, um, I don't Beautiful know. Cards. Let's see. Thank you. My daughter created the Beautiful. graphics, the box. <coughs> I wrote the booklet and channeled the quotes. And um, let's see. So shuffle the cards. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put you on the spot. There we go. And I'm not a very good shuffler, but I'm going to do my best. No, that's that's <laughs> perfect. Cancel, 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 cancel. You're a great I'm shuffler. I'm a great shuffler, and these cards are going to fly back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just so funny how quickly we can be negative. And then sometimes you just need to be, right? And sometimes you need to be mad, and you need to be angry, and you need to be upset, and you need to say, mm, that person, and, and I don't like that, and, duh, 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 and stay in it as long as you need to. Hopefully it's not too long. And then bring yourself out of it because we are humans and, and we have off, feelings. Right? Yeah, and then blow, <laughs> blow it off. But you know, I've been through a lot, as you can imagine, finding about the kids this last year, you know, losing my shaman to COVID. I mean, like, come on, people. What is happening in the planet? Like, just <clears throat> with all the crazy spiritual talk of conspiracy. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm here on the earth. I can take care of what's in front of me, what's surrounding me, and my yeah. brain, and eat healthy, and exercise, and do well, and live this life, yeah. and don't go too far off the deep end with the spirituality if you want to be able to live. Yes. And it, so it is. And so, so it is. yeah, I think they're beautiful too. When I first got them, I, f I opened, I was with my daughter, I took her for her 25th birthday to Hawaii, and I opened the deck and felt the booklet, and I was like, oh, it feels amazing, feel it. What does it say? So it says, turn guilt into gratitude, mm. judgment into acceptance, fear into love. And it's in alphabetical order, so it's easy to get to. Words carry vibrations. And guilt is one of the lowest vibrational words on the planet. Judgment creates separation and fear holds us back. When you practice releasing these old vibrations, you will tune in to what truly matters and find happiness within. And then it has three steps. Where are you still feeling guilty? How can you be grateful instead? Breathe out guilt and breathe in gratitude. How are you judging yourself or others? Practice compassion. Breathe out judgment and breathe in acceptance. Experiencing fear? Get a stone. Blow the fear into the stone. Now blow love into the same stone. Feel what happens to your vibration when you release easily. Affirmation, I shift my vibrations and old patterns quickly. Yeah. And it has a little booklet. Uh, oh. I like to be able to write in a book. Oh, that's so, that. yeah. And that's so I cool. feel like you pulled that for the collective yes. today. Because I too can feel guilty about my past or feel judgmental, you know, ab oh, uh, and I'm like, oh, no, it's you. You're, you're judging yourself if you're judging another. Yes. And be in fear, you know, oh, well, you know, where's the, where's the money going to come yeah. from? How are you going to eat? Don't think about it. Think about creating. W where did the inspiration for the cards, the good vibe cards, come from? Because... This is a, is a complex thing where we see and someone will see it on a shelf, but where would the inspiration and the love that created this come into this? Where did it, where did it inspire? Where, where did it come from you? When I first started this, I heard you have five decks in you and books. And I thought, really? And I wrote a book called Wild, which I've taken down um, about my life. It's pretty <coughs> intense. 
and it needs it needs work but it's okay it's it whatever <laughs> it is what it is it's like a you diary need to, need to pg it i need to pg <laughs> it a bit it's pretty intense and um and so my daughter was it, you know what it's such a funny story i forgot this story this is how they came to be instagram just started and they had things like you know these these um these little graphics yeah, with that's funny because i'm a and you're person. wearing a t-shirt about it right now and um they had these graphics and i was coming i was talking to clients and i was coming up with these sayings like you cannot grow until you let go or treat yourself like your own best friend or when you live from an authentic place anything is possible i don't know i was and they would say to me god i wish i could put you in my pocket and take you home i can't remember everything you say and I said, once the deck of cards is done, you will have me in your pocket. Yeah. And I had my daughter put the, the sayings that I was coming up with on top of the graphic yeah, like this. this ge geometry is beautiful. The it's, sacred it's beautiful. Yeah, it could be t-shirts and mugs, but yeah. enough, moop in the, <laughs> enough moop in the universe. Um, and so she, uh, she started making these for Instagram. Yeah. And I would put them on Facebook, I would put them on Instagram, and she made four i think and i go oh my gosh you're making the deck of cards victoria you're making the deck of cards and she said oh my god mom i don't want to do that i'm traveling europe i don't yeah. i go it's the perfect time yeah. you're traveling europe you're going to pick up all the european energy and and just create please baby please i'll pay you yeah. <laughs> and so she started doing it and then uh had a certain a number and i wanted 33 yeah. And so she went to Burning Man and she finished them at Burning Man. So some of them have like a Burning Man vibe yeah. <laughs> and some of them have a European vibe. Yeah. Wow. So that's how they were created. And they took three years produce. of producing and editing and there were still typos and there was still my um, lack of self-esteem. And even to the point where I'm so glad we have both decks. Yeah. This is the first deck and notice my picture isn't on it. Yeah. And I looked at it one day and I'm like, oh my goodness, you're still hiding. You're still hiding. So I put my picture on the back. Yes. I made them in Spanish as well. So I have buenas vibras and good vibes. Wow. And, and you speak and, Spanish? Uh, they're out there. No. 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 Spirit told me you have to have them in Spanish. Interesting. I'm like, who am I going to sell them to? How am I going to sell them? Wow. That's a beautiful call. But they're, you know, they've got a. And. They were produced, get this, when Good Vibes became super famous. Like Good Vibes was on pillows, cups, Good Vibes only started up, Instagram, everything was Good Vibes. Everything. I was like, did I miss the boat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this been, yeah, it was supposed to be done three years ago. I kind of missed the boat, but not really. <laughs> cancel, cancel. I never missed the boat. So, okay, so, so you, you produce the cards to give people opportunity to learn. Yeah. Right, so they get to learn deeper pockets of information that they probably wouldn't express on a normal day. Right, and it's that's kind of it's why I'm a, for this. It's very deep. Yeah, they're very deep, yeah. and they're extremely intuitive. And you know, you just shuffle and then pick one. There's that words or spells, thoughts yeah. or things. Yeah. You know, and you just shuffle the deck and pick one in the morning for your morning meditation, and feel the golden light in every single cell of yeah. your being. It's it they. My girlfriend that's a card reader um, said, I use these for like the teaching component. All the other yeah. ones, like they can tell the future and do, 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 tell what's going on. But then these just whack them. They just get in there wow. and and now but think on that for a while. Yes. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, thank you very much for the for the. Cards. You're welcome. I appreciate that. I'll test those tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's your thank one. you. So. With the uh, b back into the shaman yeah. lifestyle, so the you, you see stuff on TV. You have people with the sh the shaker, the the uh, the, the rattle, the, the rat rattle, rattle. So it is a shaker. Shaker rattle. rattle. <laughs> so with the rattles, wh what does that actually do? So now, what's what's the purpose of the rattle? <coughs> it clears energy. So just as you know. Um, the crystal, the rocks, the blowing, right? Because this I've seen a lot. It's also used for tracking. 
to find the wound. It's also used to journey it's like a drum. My my shamanism is Peruvian based, okay. so I wasn't really uh, taught with a drum to journey. Although I can, uh, and I've done all kinds of great things with drums and crystal bowls. But um, this is re this is my right hand. Like this for me is. I love the drum, I love the crystal bowls, I love all that, but the, it l I love the, having the rattle mm -hmm. and the sound of it and the journeying with it. Yeah. So this actually gets you into the, the spirit, is, is, that yeah. is that how it works? So it gets you, the energy's Tuned flowing. Tuned in. Yeah. Like, a, like tuning thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was always curious, because I've always seen those on TV, and I go, what, what are these guys doing, you know? We, we, we see the... Well, uh, and also it's like, there's, there's techniques, you know, with... So that's death right, giving death oh, to the is that, is that story, what it is? and the way <laughs> you wear it on your energy field. I had a feeling some death rights were needed by right then. When I started rattling, something came up, and I was like, oh, yeah, I know. You don't yeah. have to be here. You can walk. <laughs> so, so you practice, so right now, so you're, you're practicing your healing. Um, you do this, you have people coming to you for healings. Yes. Um, a lot of the times when people are going through something that they're going through and they come back to you because they feel good after you complete the process. Yes, yeah, they, they don't leave me. I've had the <laughs> same people for, I don't know, almost 13 years now. They, I mean, new people can get in, but, yeah. the, you know, I, had, I used to have a 10-week program okay. right around 2012, 2013, there was a real need for a lot of work to be cleared from certain people. Uh, those people turned into students, wanted to you know, yes. do it themselves. Um, then I went into a six-month program yeah. where you see me twice a month and uh, really get, it takes a minute to get it. Yeah. You know, like I had a woman the other day, beautiful soul over the phone, and she said, you know, how many am I going to, it's always that, right? How many am I going to need? I'm like, yeah. one should do it. <laughs> but, you Buy know. Buy three, get one free? <laughs> it's, uh, that, oh my gosh, you know what you just channeled? <laughs> my very first, when I first started. When I very first started, that's what I did. Buy three, get one free. That is so what I did. <laughs> the spirit was like, stop undervaluing <laughs> yourself, you know. <laughs> stop giving away your power. Um, but anyway, yes. It, it's great to come back. She only needed one. She felt phenomenal. Yeah. She said, I'm bringing my brother. You know, I mean, that's what happens. So, so now, yeah. you know, we spoke earlier about um, the clearing of buildings. So oh, yeah. where does the, the building clearing come from? So now, what is it that people are expecting the building? Is it the fact they feel a negative vibe? Is this a negative Yeah, spirit? it's an energy. And so let's talk about 3D people who don't believe, okay. right? And they're like, how are you talking about this? this is crazy talk? This is insane. But you know, even in the most linear mind or the most 3D person knows when they enter the office or the boardroom and it's a bad vibe. Yeah. They know. They know when they enter a party and it's a bad vibe. They know when they enter and it's a good vibe. Yeah. Unless they're completely shut down to themselves, yeah. you know that's what I'm talking about. That's the energy. So people's homes have energy. People's office buildings have energy. I've cleared energy out of a car, car accidents, um, hospitals. You know. and, and this is similar to like when people <coughs> want to sage. So you have some people who are saging and they're doing this, right? So right, right. I use Palo Santo, which is a wood okay. and uh, does not stay lit very long. And you, you know, light it with a candle and you can put it in the corners and clear uh, I use the Agua de Florida, and what is which that? is a beautiful clearing agent. Um, <sighs> I just kind of. Interesting. Well, so, what exactly is that? It's um, from Peru, and in oil or it's that's actually a uh, cologne, I think, uh, and it says <laughs> New York and Peru. And it wow, it's got a nice smell. Isn't it phenomenal? Yeah. yeah, and it just sort of, you know. Clears the energy of, of wherever you're at. So, so when you clear the energy in a, in a <coughs> place, so now we're expecting things to be <coughs> more positive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So more, you know, some people fluid. Are, are fluid is a good word. Um, some people are, you know, they bring their stuff into work. They leave their stuff at work. I've cleared, you know, really large corporations that have, you know, <laughs> had 
just a lot of people working there. Or they let someone go, and if you fire someone and there's bad juju or bad feelings between coworkers, whatever, that's a feeling. It stays in the atmosphere. It goes into the walls. The other thing is the land. So a lot of land has had a lot of Indian fighting, a yes. lot of tumultuous deaths. Um, you know, it has a lot of energy, that land itself. So I can go to a space and clear the building and then feel, ooh, yeah, that's underneath. That's ancient. That's something. So is that some under. techniques that you would use <laughs> for that? So you would use I use the same techniques for everything, yeah. <laughs> I have just this one thing I do, and it does it for all things that I that I do, clear. Do you ever go to a space where you feel like a space shouldn't be cleared? Yes. Interesting that you ask. So I've traveled all over the world. I've taken people all over the world. I've cleared everywhere I've gone. I've gone into churches. I've dropped in front of a church in France where they say Mary was or, you know, and I just got to my knees and started clearing. My sister, one of my father's children, yeah. <laughs> who's in France, she filmed me. It's actually on YouTube. I mean, I'm at the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Rome. I'm like, up, oh, okay. got a. There's a car race coming. An old car race is like, I'm like, oh well, there's a car race. It's they're starting now. I'm going to start clearing, and boom, the car goes. I mean, <laughs> it's just some crazy things have happened to me. I was in Egypt. Yeah. How was Egypt? And I went into this church, and the woman who I was with said, "Let's go here," and I went to go, and I was stopped. And I said, I can't go there. I, I can't clear it. I'm not allowed to. And I heard, do not mess <laughs> with the energy here. And so I am very respectful of Egypt. Yeah. And whatever happens on our tour, April 2nd, 2022, we will see. Interesting, the numbers I just realized are 12222. Two, two, two. Just now realized that. So wow. So, yeah, I don't know what will happen as far as healings in, in Egypt because there's some protective, I feel, protective grid energy. Right in front of the oldest pyramid in Cairo, yeah. I, uh, I was told that I'm allowed to do a meditation there with a large group. So there is going to be that, and we'll see what transpires from that. So, so you, you get um, permission to actually do the meditation? No, from, oh. from spirit. Oh, from spirit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to get it, fill out the form. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to listen to Spirit that whole trip. How many people do you normally take in your groups with you? Depends. I've had two. I've had three. I've had 17. So a nice number is eight or nine. That was England in the farmhouse. But now we're, I think we're up to 20 for Egypt. So oh, wow, it's that's a big, big group. Well, it was supposed to happen in 2020. And then, of course, all the crazy happened. Yeah. So I put it off to 2021. And I thought, no, we're not going to be ready to travel. But Spirit said April 2nd, 2022. Is this the, this is the, how many times have you been to Egypt? Uh, that was my first time. I had taken a group to Greece. Yeah. So I heard, take a group to Kos, Greece. And I thought, Kos? Where's Kos? What's Kos? So I look it up. You're not going to believe what it is. What is it? The birthplace of Hippocrates. Is that what it is? <laughs> I'm like, of course, let food be thy medicine. Yeah. I'm supposed to teach about food and people eating properly. So, okay, we're going to cost. And <laughs> had the best time. Oh, gosh, Greece. And then it's like a hop, skip, and a jump to Egypt from Greece. <laughs> so I thought, it's June. It's my birthday. It's 120 degrees. And I thought, I'm going to go. I'm going to see where my dad was raised, where my babushka and dedushka yeah. lived. My uh, grandfather, uh, dedushka, um, taught art, we thought. At the college, we know he painted um, furniture for palaces. So I get in touch with this drop of milk Jewish society um, through this woman, through a friend of my father's that's still alive in New York. Her name is Femini. <clears throat> she, and she says, hey, we're doing some research on you. and We found that your grandfather um, worked at this... French school for boys, mm -hmm. and the head, Sammy, of Drop of Milk, the Jewish museum they're trying to start up, yeah. his father took art from your grandfather. He's still alive. I'm like, oh. oy vey, what? Wow. <laughs> what are you talking about? Let's go meet him. So I go and I meet Sammy's grandfather, and he has the book with my grandfather's name in it. 
as the paint, you know, the painting teacher. It yeah. has all the teacher's names and his pictures, not my grandfather, but the boy's pictures in it. Yeah. And um, he passed away, bless his heart, last year. Uh, and I had the opportunity to sit with a man who sat with my dedishka and learned art. Like, what? Wow. What? I mean, my life is so fascinating. Yeah. I'm in awe. Yeah, <laughs> there's, so, there's so much action. I, I mean, literally, there's so much action going on. There's so much. <laughs> I'm exhausted <laughs> from myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I am very excited about myself. I, I um, you know, and it's not like that every day. And I have my ups and downs. And I, you know, uh, loved this man for 23 years and off and, off and on, off and on, off and on, and COVID hit, and we were like, let's try again, and it is the best it's ever been. I'm, you know, um, you know, I've got my kids, I have my, like I said, my grand, I have this full life, but lots of the times I sit and think, you're not doing everything you're supposed to be doing, you're not producing enough, you're not, you haven't written that book yet, you're not, you know, there's so much judgment or things that I think I'm supposed to be doing or should have done already, that it's difficult to live in the moment and look back on everything and go, but already, look, you could die now. Yeah. It's okay. You've had a full life. Really, you just turned 61? You're going to have another 30 years of this? Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> you know, so, but so I'm grateful. So I'm staying you, gratitude. You, you, you see people coming with a lot of problems. What do you feel like with some of the people going through I'm not saying that the problems are smaller, but going through less of a problem versus what you've been through, and and seeing it's interesting. I don't see it that way. I I mean, I've had, I've had people that were in cults. I've had people that are. I've had a nun that was abused by the Catholic Church. I have, I mean, horror stories. Mine is a cakewalk compared to that. It's all relative, isn't it? It's yeah. all how you see it and say it and say. Well, you know, they have it way worse than I do, or well, they have it way better than I did. And it's, it is your perception. Yeah. Perception is everything, right? So if you can look at your life and, you know, then look at someone else's life and look at someone else, and, and then go, why do I need to look at their life? Let me, how do I put in perspective my own life? And if you're a young person, and you're struggling, and you're stuck because you're under 18, you can't go anywhere, you can in your mind. You can escape in a book, yeah. or if you don't have a book, you can escape in your, your thoughts. The issue I feel now is the telephone. You know, the telephone where they said, don't sit too close to the TV when yeah. we were kids, you know, yeah. and now the telephone is this close, yeah. and everyone's like this, I imagine, 20 years from now, there'll be a huge hump and these weird fingers. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't see, my cancel, cancel to that image. My prayer is that the children of today, the children of today who didn't get their parents' full attention because their parents' head is in the camera, yeah. in the phone, taking pictures, doing this, this is, everything's a phone. It won't be a novelty to those that generation, and that generation will have nothing to do with it. Yeah. And that generation will put it down and pay attention to their kids and be heartfelt and love, yeah. and it, it'll change. It so always does. I, and I think that when people are looking at their phones and Twitter and Instagram and you are flipping up, and I think that it's just people are having this temporary fulfillment of what they believe is fulfilling them because I want to see what somebody else is doing. Yeah, and I'm flipping yeah. the pages and they believe that something exciting is coming next. Yeah, but guess what that's really creating? What's it creating? Anxiety. Anxiety, that's right. And I see more anxiety, depression in my clients now than before. It's it's this constant, <laughs> Yes. you know. Yes, and the, the world's moving so fast now. <sighs> so you can imagine emails are coming through and why you're not versus back in the day when we were sending faxes and waiting for the fax to come through now with, Email, how come you didn't respond in three minutes or four minutes? Yeah. I sent you an email. Did you get my email? Because I haven't seen a response yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what about before email? I just, s s before I got here, wrote out, hand wrote, which has been a long time for me, thank you cards. And I'm going to send them snail mail. <gasps> yeah. Because what a novelty, right? Yeah. I'm going to, like, thank you for coming to my birthday party. It was very sweet. Your gift was lovely. It's funny you said that because I wrote a thank you card <laughs> the other day too. 
So it was just thanking yeah. someone for something they had done for me, which I think is, um, which we forget. Like, yeah. oh, thank you, God. If I showed my kid, well, I thank you, God. I'm not sure he'll like, know. What is that? And yeah. a stamp. This is, yeah. It's a stamp. Paper? <laughs> Pen? <laughs> But I get thank you cards from clients. Like I get beautiful, you know, okay. handwritten thank you cards. So I'm going to extend that same courtesy and keep it up. I do send Christmas cards every year, though. I'm a big Christmas yes. card person. I remember back when we were kids, we used to line them up across the roofs, you know, put a string and everybody would be sending cards all the neighborhood. Kids would be giving them out in school. Yeah. Very different, different days now. Very different times. But I, I liked my prayer for this planet is clean air, clean water, clean food. Mm -hmm. And if someone watching this is into the conspiracy or not into the vaccine or not, come back to a prayer that makes your vibration be able to handle this time on the planet. We have just entered the Aquarian Age. We just came come out of the Piscean Age. So we've just come out of the masculine and into the feminine. I've been teaching the balance of the masculine and feminine for quite some time now, and I can see why, <laughs> because it's needed. Get back to your heart, get back to yourself. I'm not telling you not to believe in whatever you want to, but watch your vibration when you're believing that people are drinking blood yes. or the, you know there's world domination and everyone, like the world is not that organized. <laughs> really <No>. not. <laughs> yes, there is corruption. Yes, there is uh, greed. Yes, we have to take care of our planet. But as George Carlin said, Mother Earth, she's going to be just fine. It's you humans that need to watch out. Right. And then do your part. But being out here in the gram, in the face, that poison, poison, toxic, toxic talk, you're not. I'm not, we're not solving anything. Yeah. If we can come together and realize there is no such thing as separation and build communities and, and foster love and compassion and kindness in our children and do your best not to buy plastic and yeah. do your best to you know, drink clean water and eat clean food and take care of your body, your temple. And take care of each other, right? And take care of each other. And, you know, if you have a lot of money, purchase some land and grow some trees and food because we need that to breathe and have sustenance. Yes, yes. <laughs> How these corporations think they're going to continue, it doesn't make any yeah. sense. But there will, you know, there will come a time where I believe that we'll be okay and yes. that we will all come back to the earth and what's important and give our prayers. You can still give your prayers out here, yeah. but they're going to be heard a lot quicker Give them to the Pachimama. Yes. Give your prayers to the earth. Give them to your creator, whatever you believe in, too. But, you know, this prayer right here, I did this whole teaching a long time ago. But I've been praying and praying and praying, and you're not answering my prayers. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not going to get answered in that energy. How about, like, I'm going to plant a seed in the earth. Thank you so much. Like, it's here's what I was like. It starts in the earth, and then with you, and then to the heavens. And with this mind-body-spirit connection, with this earth-self-spiritual connection, you can have whatever you want. Yeah. world is your oyster. Isabel, thank you very much for what you brought to the table today. <laughs> it's been very <laughs> enlightening. <laughs> A lot of energy. <laughs> I told you, careful, because I, I get on a roll. And But thank you so much for having me. I have not done this in... Uh, uh, person over a year so yeah, I yeah. love I you I love the free spirit. I love you coming in thank you very much thanks so much for thank asking you. me have a beautiful day thank you. cheers Get it, I be serving scoops, ayy I'm on my loops, ayy If you're watching Swiss beatboxes, hit the replay I be serving scoops, ayy I'm on my tunes, ayy If I'm just tripping on this beat What the fuck about a fleet, ayy By the way, 
I still do this for the show. Uh, 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 uh.